The anatomy of thought is simply the physical structure and components that make up a thought which leads us to action on stage. Those components are wonderment, evaluation, decision, gesture, action, and final gesture. When we're working on stage with an exercise, what we want to look at is, is this an organic action? And we have to ask ourselves, what is an organic physical action? It begins with an impulse, breath and a thought. Very often the thought is subconscious, so we're not aware of it. And the breath is automatic, we don't have to think of it. Of course, on stage we may give it thought when to breathe. So when we're doing an exercise in wonder, evaluation, decision, gesture, action, gesture. What we're doing is we are following nature's laws of how a thought is structured as action on stage. And the particular exercise starts off with a reaction of wonderment, astonishment, then an evaluation. In both of these cases, we must look for the muscles along the spine that are connected to these two responses, wonder and evaluation. And the energy has to flow through the control of the flow of muscular energy, pranayana and breath. The energy has to flow freely from the brain into the body and to find those muscles. And with them is released a kind of energy when we find those muscles that are connected to thought. Then we evaluate, and as soon as we evaluate, we make a decision. Now, this happens spontaneously in life in just a moment. That decision is instantly expressed by some subtle gesture. Sometimes the gesture can be very broad, but the gesture that grows out of an impulse can be very subtle, like just the movement of an eyebrow or the smile on your face or just a slight lift in the shoulder. It can be hardly detectable, but it's always there when we're thinking and we're acting at the same time. Then from decision comes action. So we have this impulse, impulse moves through our body. We have wonderment, evaluation, decision, gesture, and then we act. We pick up the item or we respond with something we're saying. And that also has a physical expression and we have to find the muscles in the spine that express that. Now, when we follow this conduit, this physical structure of action in terms of physical movement in the body, energy is released through the nerves of the spine, and that energy is electrical. And what it does is it actually is the conduit for emotions. When all of our behavior is connected logically and consecutively, mind and body together, our emotions flow. So they, after the action comes a final gesture. And this final gesture is very important because final gestures are like punctuation marks at the end of a sentence. Some are questions, some are exclamation marks, some are periods, some are colons and say more is coming after a brief pause. Some are commas and say, wait, I have more to say. Some are semicolons and have two complete thoughts on either side of them. And these gestures are very important because when we work this specifically on psychophysical behavior, thought and action together, we then find the unique patterns of behavior, the unique minuscule thoughts that lead us to the reincarnation to a character. And this is the real value of learning how to control the anatomy of thought and the structure of psychophysical behavior known as action. The anatomy of thought and the structure of an action, okay, which we're going to call wed gag. <laughs> some of you remember it, some of you don't. I'll explain it in a minute. Sonia Moore, who was, as you know, my teacher and my mentor, came to San Francisco in um, 1979. We invited her to give us some instruction. She said, Philip, I'm working on some investigations around the spine. Well, Sonia, even when I worked with her in 1968, 
through 1976 was always emphasizing moving your body. And in the late 60s, early 70s, excuse me, she started saying, move your body from the spine before you speak. And so I was always teaching that way too, because we react with our bodies before we speak. We have physical reactions, no matter how subtle, right? But that was about as far as it got. But in the 80s, she came to San Francisco to give a talk at ATHA, which is an educational, national educational, theatrical uh, organization. And she pulled me aside and I went to her hotel room. She said, Philip, I have made a fantastic discovery. Aristotle, I've learned this from Aristotle. He says, every human action begins with awe. And I translate that as astonishment and wonderment. And so now I've discovered what is the structure of a human action. But because everything begins with thought, I call it the anatomy of a thought. The structure of a thought is the structure of an action. And what she says, when you can do this little technique without having to think about it, you have the key to continuous spontaneity on stage and to control of your emotions. And it's physical key, which you can do. What it is, is you learn how to use, discover the muscles along the spine that are connected to the various organs which release emotions. Now this sounds very far-fetched, but you can go on the internet and look at emotions and the face, and there's a team of scientists that have identified every emotion connected to every muscle of the face. And with electrodes placed on the face, they can move these certain muscles and stir emotions. You can do that almost with any part of the body, but especially the face where all of these nerves are connected in the jaw. You know, this is where all your nerves are because of speech, you need them. And they go back here to the medulla oblongata and down through the spinal column. And you can also use the base of the spine. So that's what we're gonna do. Would you place your right arm forward? Good. Now ask yourself using the magic if, what could I do with my arms in this position? <coughs> What could I do with my arms in this position? As soon as you have a sense of your, arm is, your right arm is ahead of you, your left arm is to the side, then justify it. Think, well, using the magic if, what comes to mind? And as soon as you have that image of a situation, build the circumstances in your head and adjust your body to it. That's right, always adjust your body from the feet up because it's sculpture. What is the closest art to acting? Sculpture. Melinda, you're right, sculpting. Sculpture is the closest art to acting, believe it or not. Sculpture is because we have to project everything with our bodies. Okay, now, you're going to begin the action. I want you to name this, ex this event. You're not gonna begin the action yet. You're just gonna take this pose. and You're gonna name the event, give it a name like the greeting or the farewell, whatever it happens to be. Give it a title that's very important. I'll explain later why that's important. Build the circumstances. Know who, what, when, where, why. See real people in your mind's eye. I see already you have real people in your mind's eye. Don't even look at me. Just think of your own images. See real images, real places from your own experience. Now, adjust your spine to that. but don't bring it to life yet. Now you're going to bring it to life as if this is the start of a scene, an action, and you're gonna start with wonderment. Ask yourself, I wonder what's going on, what is that? And find the muscles in your torso that express that. If you think deeply enough, you'll find those muscles because they will respond automatically as they do in life. Just ask the question and trust your body. Now evaluate, what can I do about that? What should I do? What's going on here? And find the muscles that express that. Just express it, that thought. I know your arm gets tired. You can, you can drop it and put it back whenever you like. I'm going slow, we'll go fast later. Now, wonder evaluation. Now make a decision to what to do. As soon as you make a decision, follow the first impulse physically and there'll be a gesture. And that will go into action. Wonder evaluate, gesture, decision gesture action, and final gesture sums it up. Use your whole body if it's appropriate in your situation. The final gesture, OK, 
Okay, you can rest a moment. The final gesture is the most important because the final gesture is its punctuation mark of the thought. For instance, if, you are, if your thought is one which is exclamatory, there's going to be an exclamation mark and your gesture is going to be that. If your thought is a question, it's going to be a question mark. If it's something more is coming, it's either going to be a comma or a colon, if there's a lot of things coming. And there'll always be a little pause there. You notice how the British actors at the end of, at beginning and ends of scene, they always find a slight movement that ties up the whole scene. Their emotion comes out and it tells you what the next scene is going to be. If you really watch excellent actors, they will do it almost intuitively. But I mentioned the British because they work on gesture and that and so that it ties in from one scene to another in film and on stage. And so does very fine American actors and directors. They work on that. So basically it's wonder, evaluation, decision, gesture, action, gesture. Okay? And Whatever that impulse is, the emotion comes out at the end of the action. We do it backwards when we think of we have to be emotional before we can act. No. Behave is action. Behave the way you wish to feel. Don't wait till you feel and behave. Behave the way, if you behave truthfully, your emotions will come up like that. And this is the secret of the method of physical actions, which is this technique. You are stirring your inner life through physical action without burdening the subconscious by dwelling on personal memories. You have them, but you're not dwelling on them. Any question? Okay, let's do it. Once again, okay, and I'll talk you through the series. Right arm forward, name your event, build your circumstances using the magic if. As soon as you have them, adjust from your feet. Adjust your torso when you're ready to bring it to life smoothly go from one to the next, discovering the muscles that stir the thoughts of wonder, evaluation, decision, gesture, action, gesture. Final gesture and target the emotion you wish to release. Now, can anybody name that, what was stirred? What, was, what stirred in you, Michelle? Uh, well, absolute joy and mystery and wonderment, because I found a little fairy. Joy, mystery, and wonderment. I thought it was that, something like that. It was very magical. Okay. What did you stir? I stirred um, bewilderment. Bewilderment, so kind of a confused state. Yeah. Interesting, perplexed. That's a, now, the reason why this is such an important exercise is it'll, if you can do it from moment to moment on stage, as we do in life, you will stir nuances, subtle nuances that you cannot figure out in your head at home. Plus, if you, you can't repeat it the same way. You can never repeat something physically exactly the same way. So we'll, the, the emotions, the nuances that come out will always be spontaneous and fresh and alive in the given circumstances of the play. <laughs> Always, without you having to burden yourself. Plus, every action, every moment, you know, we talk a lot, hear a lot about moment to moment. What does that mean? It means being alive from moment to moment. How do you control that? If you're dwelling on something awful that happened in your life and you go on stage with that, then the whole thing becomes that. It becomes in general. But in life, we go from, and who was it? Uh, Daniel Gomberg was telling me yesterday that when you go to an audition here in Hollywood, you have, they, want, they expect you to go from crying to, t to, to laughter to anger to rage in a moment. If you can't do it, you don't get the part. So technically, you have to be able to do it technically. You can't just force your emotions around. It won't happen or you'll do yourself emotional damage. Let's do it again. Right arm is here. This time the right arm is going to be here and the left arm is going to be forward. Again, ask yourself using the magic if, what could I do with my arm in this position? As soon as you get your idea, name the event. Adjust your body to it and target an emotion this time. You already know pretty much in this circumstance that you've got in your mind what you might be feeling. But allow other feelings to come up spontaneously. We want both because the play might say she breaks down and cries here or she laughs out loud here or she is bewildered here. You, you know, you've got to follow the playwright's idea, but you can Color it with a multitude of nuances. 
Do the whole series. Wonder, evaluation, decision, gesture, action, gesture, wed gag. Good. Can I have a, um, that's excellent. Continue. I don't mean to stop you. Michelle, I'm sorry I stopped. I didn't mean to stop you so soon. Could you turn this way and do it? Sure. No, I mean like here, come in front. It's all right if you block someone. And I want a couple people and would you, Jan, also, would you do that with your back to, yeah. Because I want people to be able to see what's going on in the spine. And the rest of you, make sure you can be seen, but, you know, from the front, okay? Okay, good. Now the next movement. The right arm is to the side and the left arm is still forward. Uh, Sonia Moore in her book calls this disobeying hands. What is it? Disobeying hands. Oh, right arm to the side, left arm forward. Now again, a new situation, new circumstances. Build them in your mind using the magic if. Name the event. As soon as you get your image, adjust your feet and torso. Bring it to life with wonderment and go smoothly Stirring the muscles smoothly, the, controlling the flow of muscular energy, one right into the other without any hesitation, just as you would in life, in life's tempo and rhythm. And if you can't do it the first time, repeat it. Involve your whole body, your feet, everything. That's good, you can change levels because you don't do everything standing. That's good, John. That's good. I can see the mo you're controlling the flow of energy up your spine and bringing it back. Are you stirring your feelings? We should be able to see your emotions in your eyes and your thoughts in your eyes. No pretending, please. Make sure you find the muscles in the spine. And it's very subtle, it can be very subtle. Okay, now I want you to do something that is interrupted in the middle by some, somebody or some noise, just to use your imagination. It, the positions are, in, are not important, they just take us out of our realm of usual posture. And feel free to turn around too. You don't have to stand with your back the whole time. Move about if you need. So we get interrupted. Yeah. Okay. And just observe in you what comes up when you get interrupted. That's good, Michelle. That's very clear. Your adaptation was sharp, clear, and interesting. We're gonna get into that on this scene in adaptation. Were you frustrated by the interruption, John? Uh, yeah. It was more like a, a nuisance or an annoying. Yeah, it's more like a nuisance. I should be able to look at you and instantly know what you're feeling. If you do it truthfully, I will feel it. If you push it, nobody's going to feel it, including you. You think you're, you're deluding yourself. If, if you push your emotions, you're not being real. It has to be truthful, measure of truth. We'll get into that too. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any questions around this? Everybody understands it? Well, sit down for a moment. I simply want one person to stand up. Karidad, would you? Would you please repeat any of those circumstances and gestures? Anyone, the first one that comes to mind, just go into it physically. Now, Karidad. Were you able to recall the circumstances just through the physical action? Yes. Did, would you, did you stir anything? Yeah. But this was the first one you did. Right. And the first one you weren't quite sure where you were going with it. Exactly. 
So you only stirred it to the degree that you stir might have stirred it the first time you did it. Correct. This is the law of conditioned reflex. Stanislavski borrowed from science. You asked me during our break, how does science apply to this? Well, science and the art of acting. Acting is never a science, and nor should it be. Stanislavski was opposed to that. It's an art. It's the refinement of the communication of the human soul. Perhaps it's even one of the highest expressions of the human spirit, is art. But science gives us knowledge, and knowledge gives us power, and it gives us tools to build things with, right? So in the first conditioning ex part of the exercise, that was vague to you. So when you recalled it physically, it came up the same way. Now choose one that you feel was later on that was flowed and just put your attention on the physical side only. You found something that was precious to you. And what was the, what was the feeling that came through for you? Uh, loss. And yours? At the end, yeah, it's loss. Okay. Spiritual communion. Because on the subtlest level, we read one another's thoughts all the time. It's how we survive in the world. Someone walks in the room, I, gotta, I don't feel comfortable with that person around me. Some, oh, I haven't seen them in such a long time, I just want to hug them, I love them so much. You know, we just feel it. We read one another's thoughts. Stanislavski called it spiritual communion. It's your goal on stage. The highest form of communion is spiritual communion. The highest form of acting is reincarnation. And to achieve that, we have to live the life of the human spirit on stage. And we can only live our own life. Transformation into character means you live your own life and you transform the energies like a transformer, electrical transformer, into that that appears to be a character because it's just a delusion. And that's, believe it or not, where quantum physics comes in. People see what we project into the space. They, space is full of images. Your thoughts are filling this room. If you want to commune with an audience and bring out the subtlety of every thought and feeling, you, you only have to be alive in the moment psychophysically and live in the character's circumstances and the character image will project unconsciously to you. <laughs> it's a mystery. It's a mystery. And it, it, but we know how it works, technically. But that, it's as simple as that. You were able to pick up her emotion and you were correct and that's what she stirred. Without any preparation, just the physical structure of a thought and an action.